Hi everybody, I'm James and today a little bit of a departure from normal we're having a look at the new Ionic 5 from Hyundai so this, unlike most of the videos you've probably seen online, is the base model now that is very likely because in New Zealand the only model in the line that qualifies for our new rebate is the base model so that comes in at uh, just under eighty thousand dollars getting it just in for the eight thousand dollar rebate so let's have a look at it okay so here we go 58 kilowatts two-wheel drive and uh, looking around the outside obviously we've got the standard features of the Ionic 5 with those fancy headlights I'll have to test in a bit to see if the front grille lights up in the base model, I'm not sure. Uh, 19 inch wheels. You've probably seen enough of the outside of this car normally to know all about it. Uh, yes, the same rear ends. Nicely labelled by the dealership. And let's have a look inside. Okay, so inside the back we have hard plastic for the doors, cloth seats, fairly basic feeling. Got quite a, a soft fabric on the outside, but a little bit of a heavier denim type weave in the center of the seats I would say that wouldn't stand up to my cap uh, we do have two USB ports in the back a cup holder no pass through on that seat by the look of it but we do have 60-40 fold down seats uh, vents there you see in the B pillars for the rear passengers slightly different place to see those look up above got a standard fabric headliner out to the back there okay now into the front again with the rather cheap feeling hard plastics on the door although there is a little bit of padding on this armrest you can see the plastics aren't standing up to general rain splatter in terms of staying looking nice this is just a four speaker setup yep four two in the back uh, we do of course have the flat floor like you would have seen in other models dashboard very limited padding in that and the seats are the same here a open weave sort of fabric for the headrest and the outer of the seat and then this heavier as I say, denim feeling weave on the main body of the seats. The centre console is, I'm guessing, a faux leather, PU leather of some description there. Not much padding on that either. And back into rather cheap plastics around most of the rest of it. The buttons and see capacitive for most of your climate control. Unlike the EV6, this is all static, I think. Um, let's see, hold on. Media, navigation, that. Yeah. Yeah, that isn't changing anything. Uh, 
tracking camera, we can turn that on. So you have some hard buttons get in here where you can see. Sorry, it's a very sunny day today. Favorites menu. So these are all hard buttons here and there's a physical volume control knob. Touch display, which I'm certainly not going to get into today. Maybe if I buy one of these. But yeah. It's um, definitely on the cheaper feeling side. I'm not sure if this steering wheel is leather or TU leather. It feels alright though. So at least the driver interfaces are okay. On the driver's side, a better look at the controls. So we have a chromed plastic end to the indicator stalk. Um, this is your gear selector here. You can see in there very well. Um, yep, so that functions in a rotary manner. There's park on the end. Various other controls. All quite basic feeling and looking. Capacitive buttons on the steering wheel, which is currently upside down. Interesting, as long as we're unlocked, we do have power assist on the wheels. That's something I'm not used to coming from ICE vehicles to electric. So, mostly capacitive buttons here with some um, toggle switches across, and then your drive mode button down here which is looks like a little rotary dial but it's just a push button okay in the front we have a franc or a fruit depending on how you like to say that this being the base model it is actually a quite decent size you could fit a bit of shopping or a few bags in there quite happily right as for the boot It's as much the same as the other models, probably just more basic in terms of plastic. Have a looks like emergency release for the charging port, or is it just a manual open? Uh, yep. Right, that's what that is. That's your emergency charge release cable or something like that looks like there's some ventilation in here 12 volt power some luggage tie down points four of those and charging cable let's see what's under here we have a granny lead, a tire mobility kit, Put this up so it's a little bit of extra storage there underneath the flat floor. So, probably reasonably practical family sort of car, definitely on the pricier end of things of course. But yeah, let's see how it drives. Okay. Camera setup's a bit woolly, but we'll see how we go. We are currently in normal mode. It does have a snow mode, interesting. like in a pothole. Glides over potholes pretty well. Using regen braking, that works. Now then, how do I... Ch 
change. Ah, oh, there we go, level two. Jesus, level three, three genes, really strong. High fiddle. All right. Mhm. Mm so we have zero regen. One through three, and then the fourth level is eye pedal, because everything needs an eye these days. Uh, running, coasting at the moment in zero. That's interesting. Check it in one. have to give way to because you're a Muppet. Even though there was a huge gap behind us. New Zealand drivers are pretty terrible everybody, I'm sorry to say. Alright, so level one regen. Oh, just a little bit there. Still coasting along, very slowly coming to a stop. Check it in level two. Feel that more. That's about what I'd get from my two litre Volkswagen. Maybe a little more even. Fortunately it's lunchtime so there's traffic everywhere. Oh, and the default radio setting seems to be birds tweeting. Let's turn that off. Bye bye birdies. Assuming it's in some sort of demo mode to emphasize the peacefulness of the cabin. Talking about the cabin, it's relatively comfortable. The seat's okay, maybe a bit narrow for someone a bit bigger like myself. Should I say wider? Still, gives you a firm feeling and holds you in the seat well. Now, I'm not 100% on all the safety features and how to turn them on and off. Smart cruise control conditions not met. Okay, I can't just turn it on. So that should give me radar guided cruise control in terms of following following it a reasonable distance from the car in front. Keep assist. It's hard to tell if it's working because this is a dead straight road. However, the, when the dealer tip took me out earlier, he showed me it does indeed work.
Mm, it's just distance the car didn't like before. Most likely speed as well, but... Okay, it's defaulted to 30 kilometers an hour. Turn lane keep on as well. It is quite close to the left hand side of the road, but maybe it is the middle, it's just I would normally drive slightly further away from the parked cars. Keep hands on steering wheel. Oops. I've got them on the steering wheel. It's a bit slow to react to that. Stopping happily for me. Hmm. It works. So, where we're going is a relatively steep, windy hill with a well, half decent speed limit. handling pretty well considering the size and weight of it. It's certainly not a sports car by any means. And definitely doesn't have the acceleration that I think the higher models do. Oh, you need to speak them. Okay. So, time for some conclusions. All in all, I think it is a good vehicle, but this base model, um, for me, coming from a Volkswagen, with the standard of trim in that, feels a bit too cheap for me. It would be probably a reasonably practical vehicle for a family. A family perhaps with a little bit of money and wanting to get a good size electric vehicle to upgrade. In terms of performance, I'm comparing to my current car, which is a 2 litre turbo Volkswagen Jetta. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's effectively a Volkswagen Golf with the Golf GTI engine in it. So, reasonably good performance. This, um, I would say, due to the electric engine, certainly has good acceleration. It's about on a par with my current car, but it lacks the power to support the weight of it um, for spirited driving when you get um, up a hill or anywhere moderately challenging. So, not really what it's designed for, but it is what I'm looking for. So this version wouldn't be for me. I could possibly see myself being relatively happy with the higher trim models, but when you get up into that price range, we're talking 100 to $110,000 New Zealand, I probably wouldn't be happy enough to spend that much money on it without having a good look at the coming competition like the Kia EV6 and the Polestar 2 and things like that coming in the near future. So I took it back to the dealership and said my goodbyes so my search for my next car goes on.